Welcome to The Undercurrent, your source for grassroots news, and we are here in Chicago at the Climate Reality Leadership Summit. I'm speaking with Dr. Mike McCracken. He is the Chief Scientist for Climate Projects at the Climate Institute. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. Happy to be here. So, I work a lot with uh, various environmental issues, and one of the big arguments that comes up when talking about getting off of fossil fuels is why don't we switch to nuclear, or why don't we switch to natural gas. What are some of the problems with those fuel sources? Well, what we need to do is do things rapidly. Um, and for nuclear, there's a, still a lot of questions about doing it. And there's a real benefit for having distributed power. I mean, so, uh, solar and renewable have tremendous benefits. Um, the problem with natural gas is we're going to have to get off it in 20 years if we're serious about climate change anyway. And so why switch to that anyway? It might be a nice bridge um, and, and help in some ways, but if you leak any methane out of the gas wells, that's an important climatic effect. So the question is, why not switch now? We're basically there um, uh, with respect to wind and renewables and solar right now. In my city, in Los Angeles, Mayor Villaraigosa and uh, Mr. Gore came out a few months ago for the Beyond Coal campaign for the Sierra Club and said that, you know, announced that Los Angeles would be the first city to be coal free by 2025. And they will be doing that by uh, converting the coal plants that are in use now to natural gas plants. So is there really a differential there if you take into account the, the leakage and um, if any of that gas is... Uh, obtained through fracking, will it, we be worse off or, or better off? Like, What's the differential between natural gas obtained through fracking and coal-fired plants? Well, if you leak just a little bit, a few percent, it's not really much better than coal. Um, so you really want to get off it. I guess I'm not quite sure why in the world you'd go to natural gas when you have so much opportunity with solar in California. Um, I mean, why go over to natural gas? There's a lot of options. To, to go to, to to solar thermal and and solar on people's homes, so I'm not I'm not aware of the energy program well enough to know, but I'd be heading towards solar and wind as fast as I could. Beyond the leakage, what are some of the problems scientifically with fracking? The environmental effects. Well, there's potential local environmental impacts wh where you are. People are having trouble doing it. The major oil companies that say they do it say they can do it quite cleanly. Um, the trouble is they're not the ones who generally drill the wells. The wells are drilled by wildcat people who sort of do it. They're not necessarily as careful. They're not necessarily as responsible. Uh, the things sit there sort of unused and unconnected for a few years typically. And so you can have leakage of methane. Um, and what is being found, there's, there's right now sort of a discussion going on between EPA and the industry. EPA's in the process of updating its regulations about emissions from gas and oil activities. And so they're looking at this issue of leakage. And the big companies are saying it isn't much, but there are measurements made by some of the agencies that go around, and they see lots of it. And so there's not agreement on what the emissions are yet, but there seems to be a lot there. So in the interim, it just seems much better in general to be going as fast as you can to solar and wind. And why do this um, if you don't have to? I go to a lot of Tea Party events. I talk to a lot of conservatives. Uh, the inevitable argument that you always face is, well, you know, it, the science is flawed. East Anglia, the scientists colluded in England to present false information. What is the consensus of the scientific community on climate change? Well, the basic facts, which are what matter about having to do some, some of this, were well established even back in the 1960s, way before all of this. What's been going on is a lot of study of details. Um, I mean, all of these investigations that have been done about supposed climate gate things have sort of said, look, that really wasn't a problem, something. We understand the basics of climate change. It's very clear. We're changing atmospheric composition. It's going to lead to warming. We're seeing it already happening in many places in unusual ways, and we know it's human induced. We're going to be doing much more. It has impacts, and we're going to have to cut back 80, 90, 100 percent on, on what it is. So that's, that's basically very clear facts, very well established for a very long period of time, endorsed by, by lots of different groups. And there's ways to do it, and so, we, so at least to try and get a good start on doing it. But we're not even trying, which is very unfortunate. But the hard number 
scientific community, what percentage of the scientific community stands up behind climate change? That it's a scientific fact. Well, science isn't decided by vote. That's actually the wrong question to do, or to, to act. Science is de decided by what does the evidence show, something like that. Now, I mean, those are surveys of a particular set of people who put out a particular set of publications and whether they set a particular set of things. Okay, I mean, there's some very large percentage of that. But when you add basically every country in the world accepting the findings of the scientific community, every country in the world without exception doing it, when you have all these national academies going over their reasoning and looking and saying that that's, you know, that's important. I mean, they're, they're looking at the evidence and going over that, and when you go over the evidence, this is the only conclusion you can come to. In this world we live in, where do I begin? Won't get too far if truth ain't your friend. You can pretend, stick with the norm, keep it status quo, and get misinformed. Undercurrent, under the surface, makes the mainstream get so nervous.